It's been a while since we've looked at this slide, but it's good to remind ourselves where we're at and where we plan to go. So far, we've talked in the methods textbook about solving algebraic equations of a single variable by bracketing and open methods and using MATLAB's F0. We've talked about solving systems of equations using direct methods, including Euler and Thomas methods and the factorization methods, DeLittle and Cholesky, and also using the iterative methods, Jacobi and Gauss-Seidel. And then for nonlinear equations, we introduced the extension of the Newton and the fixed point methods. Then we talked about curve fitting and interpolation and using measures of the goodness of fit to compare models. In chapter six of the methods textbook, we're going to introduce methods for numerical differentiation and numerical integration. And we'll show how these can be implemented in MATLAB. We numerically differentiate discrete data using what are called finite difference methods. And we numerically integrate discrete data by approximating areas. If a sequence of x, y data are equally spaced, that is, the delta x are all equal to some constant h between data points, and the data are ordered pairs, x1, y1 through xn, yn, then for each pair of adjacent points, the difference between successive values in the x direction is h. If these data represent some unknown function, f of x, then we can write the Taylor series expansion of f of x around a point xi. Earlier, we used the Taylor series expansion to approximate a value of f of x near a point xi in the case where f was differentiable. So we knew its first derivative, second derivative, and so on. In this case, we're going to work backwards. And instead of solving the Taylor series expansion to find f of x, we're going to solve the Taylor series expansion to find the derivative f prime of x, or a second derivative, f double prime of x, and so on. If we write the Taylor series expansion around the point xi to approximate the value of f at xi minus 1, and then we truncate the terms after the first order term, so the second derivative and higher derivative terms are neglected, then we can solve for the derivative of f evaluated at xi as a function of f at xi and f at the previous point xi minus 1. Then we can substitute the y values in for f. This is a finite difference formula that approximates the derivative of the y data at a point xi using the value at xi and the value at xi minus 1, the previous data point. Because this is related to the slope of the data between xi minus 1 and xi, this is called a two-point backward difference method. Similarly, we can derive a two-point forward difference method for the first derivative. Again, writing the Taylor series expansion around the point xi, we now predict the point at xi plus 1 instead of the point at xi minus 1. Again, we truncate the higher order terms and solve for the derivative f prime, and then substitute the y values in for the function. Now we are approximating the derivative of the y data at xi using the point at xi and the point at xi plus 1. This is a different formula to approximate the derivative and is called the two-point forward difference formula. Both the two-point forward difference and the two-point backward difference have a truncation error that we say is of order h, meaning that that error is proportional to h. By indicating that the truncation is of order h here does not mean that the truncated terms have the order of magnitude of h. Rather, this is a useful scaling that we will later use to compare other finite difference methods that tells us the relative size of the error for the different methods. To see that, we'll next look at a two-point central difference formula. To derive the two-point central difference formula, we begin by considering two Taylor series expansions both around the point xi, and one of them predicting f at xi plus 1, the other predicting f at xi minus 1. This time, instead of truncating after the first order terms in the Taylor series, we'll truncate after the second order terms in the Taylor series. Notice here that we have two second derivative terms that are identical. We can subtract these two equations to eliminate the second derivative terms. When we subtract them, 
We obtain a difference between f at xi plus 1 and f at xi minus 1. The subtraction also eliminates the f at xi terms and results in doubling the h f prime at xi term. So we then divide by 2h to, de to derive a formula for f prime at xi. And this relates f prime at xi only to f at xi plus 1 and f at xi minus 1, since the f at xi and the second derivative terms were eliminated by the subtraction. Also, dividing by 2h makes the truncation term proportional to h squared. Again, substituting in the y values for the function gives us the two-point central difference method for approximating the first derivative. This has truncation error of order h squared. When h is small, the truncation error of the two-point central difference method is smaller than the truncation error on the two-point forward and backward difference methods, which you'll recall are of order h. The forward and backward difference methods both have truncation errors of order h, whereas the central difference method has a truncation error of order h squared. Making h smaller, therefore, improves the estimate of the derivatives, but only to the extent that the data is precise. These three figures interpret the two-point backward difference method, the two-point forward difference method, and the two-point central difference method for us graphically. The slopes of the two blue secant lines drawn here represent the approximate derivatives at xi from the backward and the forward difference methods. The backward difference method takes the difference between the y values at xi and xi minus 1 and finds the slope of the secant line to approximate the derivative at the point xi. The forward difference method takes the difference between the y values at xi and xi plus 1 and finds the slope of the secant line to approximate the derivative at xi. If the true slope, which is unknown because we don't know the function f, is represented by this tangent line, we can see in this cartoon drawing that the central difference method may be a better approximation. Of course, this is just a cartoon drawing, and the central difference estimate for a real set of data may also provide a slope that is not equal to the true tangent line of the unknown function f. This is just intended to illustrate that the two-point central difference method may give a better estimate than either the backward or the forward difference methods. We'll show in the next video how we can include even more points to obtain higher precision on the estimate of the, of the first derivative or even higher order derivatives.